I mean, hey, have a certain coffee. <laughs> and this, this I made for you, so mama. Thanks, tea. pa. <laughs> How was it today? Oh, are you just recording us after all that? I recorded already, don't worry. <laughs> have a coffee, coffee, tea, coffee. So how's it? I think I used to cheat her to like buy tea for you. Thanks, huh. thanks, pa. So how about how? I mean, seriously. Wait, wait, I have to take the shirt to school. I don't want to pa. Kala. No, you cannot. You cannot jaga the tempat ni. My brain is like really, really fried, man. Starting masuk macam mana? Lepas makan masuk. Everybody was so welcoming, kan? Yeah. Incredibly welcoming. It was so nice. The atmosphere was good. In a way that I think helped me to be because I I was I was feeling so nervous actually. I think it was more of intimidating because when you read the participants and who they are, what they represent, and they're all. At the level of NGOs, and they mm. and, and, and this is something that they've already probably they, they have probably worked with closely, familiar. and yeah. you know, know what to do. But you know guys that. are definitely King Lisa's friend. We're newbies on this topic, so whilst we are, we understand yeah. that we're here to go to learn more about it. It yeah. still doesn't help that there's other participants who are, you know. Nanti kita tanya soalan yang bodoh. Which, by the way, kids. Asking a question is never a stupid thing, but you know that yeah, perasaan of feeling like, ah, sorry, and, and, but what is it mean? that you know less is Correct. also not wrong, right? But you're yeah. more powerful yeah. than them. You got social media. Actually, we've been asked to do a presentation yeah. on Thursday with regards to a workshop communication and awareness raising. So I was given the impression that we were we are doing it with um, another selected group or another selected person to present. Mm -hmm. The passion to issues related to children has always been. It's always been uh, something very close to me, and um, very very thankful that I am actually Malaysia's first national Google ambassador because th that allows for me to train a lot better with UNICEF for me to fully understand on how uh, I should advocate better. This being a part of it as well. Yeah. So both of us have always been involved in campaigns with regards to children, family. That's that's something that's that's not really new to us. Mm. But I think two years ago, Lisa and I were on board. Um, as we were approached by the star and they were running this campaign called Predator uh, in my phone and we're, we were basically trying to get MPs on board to renew our Child Act Law 2001 yeah, to, to include anti-grooming laws inside. Mm. So one of the directions that we were on board with was to create the awareness of predators on our phones, of mm. our kids and us being mothers and all that, having daughters, we thought this is really, really important to get the messaging out. Yeah. So this was something that we were lobbying for MPs, uh, members of parliament. This is me uh, 78 pages ago. <laughs> <laughs> she was pregnant there with uh, Leo, right? Number two, yeah. This is actually the then uh, Minister of Communications, uh, Dato Saleh. So I had an interview with him. Uh, we got the star, of course, to record the whole interview and trying to rope him in to get the support of these two parties. So there's Barisan National and, of course, there's the opposition. So I was trying to lobby from both sides of the yeah. table to get them, um, you know, to sign the bill too. Lisa is, on the other hand, was uh, talking to the Women, Family and Community uh, Minister. So she had her interview, again, pushing for anti-grooming laws to be put in for our Sexual Offences Against Children Act 2017. We did 112 votes, 114 voted in. And this is crucial because in 2017, when this was uh, passed, the next year was the general election. So there was a lot of tension between MPs. But to get them on board for this, for the children, that was a big deal for us. Because we were worried, you know how it is with politics and they just want to be annoying. Because, of course, the then government, ruling government was uh, pushing for this. And, and that was also the yeah. time where we realised how um, presence by those from the entertainment industry, just like, um, like us, yeah. Um, it, it does have some good impact in a way when it comes to giving some sort of, in, you know, lack for the better word, pressure for them to actually hasten or rather facilitate the process. So that's the end. That's the other side. But they all came together in one picture. So that was awesome. They all said yes. So we had that act and bill passed in Parliament. So yay. Right after that, a few months later, we were involved with the follow-up with regards to the um, new Child Law Act. So we had this seminar, Stop Sexual Violence Against Children. Lisa and I were both moderators as well as panelists for the seminar. And um, following up to that, during the launch of this seminar, our then Prime Minister had agreed 
to set up a special sexual crime court against children. Um, I used my summary because as a panelist as well as a moderator, we were also given the mandate to present our findings and our summary to the patron of that seminar, the person who was in charge, who was the Prime Minister's, um, the then Prime Minister's wife and she was, is, was, was a very powerful person. Oh my god. Uh, we were all supposed to present our findings based on each <coughs> session that we had and I decided to use that uh, findings and also to write in because I'm also a columnist for the stars. Sorry Lisa, I cut you off. I don't know why. I <laughs> tried to screen cap the whole face. Okay. But yeah, so we maximize our interviews with the media. Yeah. Uh, this media interview that I did, it was actually for a, uh, a new hijab scarf that I was emceeing this event and they wanted to know what my, you know, more of the fashion. I'm so not fashionable. Uh, but I managed to bring in the fact that, you know, statelessness and this is something new. And then they, they actually got more interested in it because they were like, oh, what is that? What is statelessness? What is this? What is this? So it's great. This is a TEDx talk um, that I was invited to. Again, I decided to talk about the state of statelessness. So it was great because I talked about uh, the state of statelessness in very layman terms. So I had a lot of um, students going there and now they are advocating this because they've got friends whom they found out that are stateless or refugees and they didn't realize just how, how bad or how um, important it is to talk about this and to do something. So it's all about plug, plug, plugging in. This was an award show that I did recently and um, it was live. My director was talking to me over my earpiece and she says, oh, shit, 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 underrun, 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 say something, do something. And my Chinese co-host was saying, I, I, I didn't watch the movies, I don't know what else I can, you know, there's nothing else I can fry. <laughs> shit, shit, shit. And I said, don't worry, don't worry, I've got this covered. You just try and say whatever I say in Chinese, because there's English or whatever. So I went there and then we, so I had about three minutes underrun. So I spoke to the crowd, I said like, you know, it's fantastic that we've got all these wonderful 10 shows, you know, 10 movies, it's great, all showing themes of humanity, but I'm seeing something that's missing, statelessness. <laughs> <laughs> and I really wish that, you know, you guys can, you guys can try and find a movie, someone who has the courage and the balls, actually I should never say balls, women's. Privates are actually very much stronger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I always said I'd have some balls, grow some balls, grow some balls. I'm like, we hit that. Okay, sidetracking a bit, sidetracking a bit, but yes, um, I said, let, 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 someone has the courage to do a movie with regards to the statelessness, especially in Sabah, because it's a very politically sensitive topic. So if anyone does it here in this, uh, in this within this ballroom right now, in this hall, kudos to you. So that was, and then of course, Owen, who's my co-host, like, she's a follow. So they're like, okay, done, all right, wrap, wrap up, the, wrap up, wrap up the show. So wherever you can, we plug, 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 plug in. Plug. Social media, YouTube. The reason why my husband over here is here is because he's also recording. So don't worry, there'll be um, because I'm worried that some people might have some privacy issues. It's just us. He's just taking pictures of me, and uh, we'll be posting this up over my YouTube channel just to get more awareness. <coughs> and I'm gonna pass it over to Lisa Suryani, who is the queen of social media. She actually received two awards, two years in a row for being uh, the social media queen in Malaysia. A lot of things are sort of like, not thoroughly explained perhaps, or, or, or fabricated and etc. So basically the intention of this visit was to sort of share with our donors that humanitarian aid does work. Um, so um, try not forget to contribute some more because the tendency of um, maybe say popular events like natural disasters or all that would take prov providence and then after that they kind of forget to donate to general funds. This was the kindness campaign also uh, UNICEF was a very strong partner in it. The reason why I was uh, on board with this campaign was because of the message direction that was chosen. UNICEF kind of taught me that you know how about you try a positive affirmation rather than a negative instead of saying anti-bullying why don't you say kindness instead uh, to give a different kind of example instead of saying I don't want war just say I I want peace. Uh, I would like to congratulate UNICEF uh, Malaysia because we're on a second year run now. We're getting a, we're getting a lot more support, and this is all through social media. So what happened was, this guy, his name is Said Azmi. He's a child activist in Malaysia. Um, he posted up uh, something on Facebook, and that was when I learned what statelessness was, a little a gist of it. So I contacted him and I said, "Me, um, what is this all about?" He said, "I got the person to to introduce you to." Dr. Hartini is anything? Yes, this one. <laughs> She's actually an alumni. So we met and then we kind of had like a, a thorough discussion. Uh, it was overwhelming, but I kind of felt that I need somebody else on board. Especially with the issue of one of our states in Malaysia, Sabah. It's highly politicized. 
uh, definitely being Sabahan as well. I thought, and, and she always, she has heart when it comes to child advocacy. So I gave her a call and I said, babe, are you on board? And she said, ons. It's a thing that we say in Malaysia, ons. <laughs> so during our first meet, um, after discussing, okay, what, is, what should we do? What's the call to action? Who should we meet? Which minister? Which minister? Which minister? Because obviously we're the noisemakers and we're not the policy changers, right? My mom was actually there and innocently asking me, because uh, Islam is actually the main religion in, uh, in, in our constitution, Islam is actually the main religion in, in Malaysia. So she was like, what's Islam's take on statelessness? To which all the three of us were kind of like, Oi? we actually don't know. So I asked me, said, let's go and meet religious leaders and ask them what is their take, or rather what is Islam's take on statelessness. This is uh, one of the muftis, uh, one of the religious leaders uh, in Malaysia. What's good is that after you address a question and your concerns and etc., he and his other scholars would do a thorough study and then after that they would come out with the article in their website and also on Facebook about what their views are on the concerning issues that were addressed to them. And uh, we were very, very thankful that it was actually favorable, of course, to the best interest of the child. But we didn't want to stop there, of course. We wanted to also meet the ministers as well, to sort of kind of like, I guess, we wanted to hear with our own ears and see with our own eyes what the reactions would be by, you know, the ministers. She comes from the Ministry of Women, Family and Community. And uh, that was when I think we experienced for the very first time how, how challenging this may be. Ultimately, what we would want is a right to a nationality, right? With a right to a nationality, all your other rights would be sort of be by default. It becomes an as of right the minute you get that card or, or, or whatever. Quite honestly, it really puts you in perspective, you know, when you're without it. You know what I mean? If we allow that to sink in for a while. Two weeks later, the statement came out from the Mufti addressing the issue of um, statelessness. Everything that we did was all posted up on social media. The first meet, the meeting with the, the religious leader, the meeting with the minister, all that. All addressing and kind of raising the awareness of what statelessness is, but in the layman term, in order for, for, for our society to understand what it is about. And we were really surprised to see the reactions of, huh? oh my gosh, we didn't know that there was such a thing. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. However, the, on our private messages, there were a lot that were coming in saying, oh my God, Lisa, oh my God, Daphne, thank you so much for addressing this. We need your help, we need your help, we need your help. We started seeing a lot more articles that were coming out from traditional media. Before this, you would not see this at all. This is just a, a, a little bit of what, of what has come And it was interesting because media started calling us up and saying, can we do an interview and can you talk about it? I said, we're not ready yet. Yeah. But if you wish to, then we we we, we would sort of direct them to, to see maybe to you know, draw Martini. Prince of Malini, Cantini, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, Laura says yes. <laughs> this was yesterday. Wait, which Laura? You. <laughs> <laughs> How entirely paramount it is to uh, translate the knowledge to them. Uh, so humbly we admit we are newbies at advocating something as as complex as this, which is statelessness, but I guess that's the good thing, you know, uh, we're really thankful to be here, thankful to have met all of you, all the facilitators are ons, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can you do a close? Okay, okay. <laughs> so I, think I wanted to add in Laura's thing, because it really hits home when you mentioned it yesterday. At yeah. the end of the day, a lot of people don't know, and yeah. when we started talking about this, and yeah. us getting to know more and more, and that's where people started getting interested in the plight mm -hmm. of statelessness. So it's really important to translate that knowledge to them, and that's why we're trying to get more advocates on board. Unfortunately, not all uh, personalities in the entertainment industry share the same sentiment or passion as Lisa and I. Some have mm -hmm. asked for money. Uh, yeah, they may, but then like, how much is it? payment for it. And we're like, no, 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 that's not how it works. Because <laughs> it has to come from the heart. Yeah. Since social media is really one of our important tools to use as a medium, mm -hmm. leverage on it. We need people to know there is this issue. I can't believe that this is the final day of our course. It has been incredibly mind-blowing. The fact that so much data is right here in my brains right now, but at the same time, it, I'm exploding with ideas and um, I'm really, really empowered and I want to make sure that other people feel the same way, not just in terms of knowledge, but also in passion and really realizing this dream because at the end of the day, it takes political will to make the change. And if I can create this awareness of this movement, um, especially among my people, are so really, really excellent for us to get things going and today. I got my show. Okay, tonight I'm gonna blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs>
These are the co-directors of ISI. Uh, this is Laura and Dr. Laura, sorry, Dr. Laura, and this is Amal. So we work on the right to nationality and statelessness around the world, and we are an organization uh, that was set up five years ago, and we feel that everyone has a right to a nationality, but still there are at least 50 million people who are stateless, and so we feel it's our obligation to work to ensure that everyone's right to a nationality is protected and is respected, and that stateless people are able to enjoy their other rights. There are lots of people who I think would enjoy the course and learn things that are useful for their work because statelessness is something that interacts with situations where people are refugees, it has an impact on child rights, it has an impact on women's rights, and so people working across any of these issues would benefit from learning about how statelessness affects their work and their ability to do what they want to do with that work. Congratulations, Yay! thank you for being uh, probably our most jumping around course <laughs> participant. It's been a delight. Thank you so much. And uh, congratulations. Yay, the tied winner, the three-way tie for best Malaysian participant, goes to Lisa. <laughs> thank you so much. How do you feel, Lisa? How do you feel? I want to frame this back home. I can't. I can't wait to share this with um, with UNICEF Malaysia. Um, I'm really, really thankful. Quite honestly, like um, it's a course that I think that I wouldn't mind taking again. Please come to Malaysia, please. Yes. I don't know, like really. Just buy their tickets. And it's important to say it may look as though they're just smiling and giggling and having a lot of fun this week, but these ladies have worked so yeah. hard and, and as concentrated well. so much. <laughs> <laughs> to try to understand and follow things, it's yeah. very admirable. You know, you've shared so much with us, but have we at least contributed like a tiny bit in, um, you know, because it was all about learning and sharing. So what we shared, was there anything that you learned from Air? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <Thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you got your money? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Amal doesn't need to learn anything anymore. His learning is, his Yay. learning days are over. His brain is full. <laughs> now, every time someone asks a question, we discover more about what interests people, what motivates right. people. Right. We're forced to try to find new ways to answer questions so yes, we get better yes. at our work. Right. And right. you guys have definitely brought new knowledge to us. I mean, Beautiful. I have no idea how Twitter is actually used for the power of good. We tweet, but yeah, you know, we need to do Instagram. better. And Instagram Facebook, and. Yes. Uh, uh, just the fresh perspective right. on the roles that different people can play yep, yep. is fantastic. Yes. Um, and we will do more to reach out to people who are working in completely different sectors yeah, to try yeah. to draw on their skills. I think the strategy you all used of uh, first going to religious leadership to get an interpretation and, and then, then using that somewhat, to yeah. apply pressure on political leadership, I mean that's a, a very kind of unique way I think mm. of thinking not just in terms of principles right. from a human rights perspective yes, but other, right. also other moral authorities that we can draw on yeah. to apply political pressure to achieve change. Uh, yeah, yeah and we're doing it in the sense where it's a religion context although it's supposed to go it's it's, it's not supposed to be um, how do I say it's supposed to be beyond religion and then beyond your beliefs and you know it's supposed to be despite you know, no, nobody should be subject to being stateless right but it's just that understanding the way our society um, um, things and, and how they you know uh, receive information um, it always has that you know a little bit more strong hold when we get an endorsement by somebody who is of a religious leader so yeah. mm -hmm. This is definitely Eye King's channel, but basically it revolves around my family. And if you enjoy watching our videos, press the subscribe button, please. Hey, so you guys done all the part, huh? <laughs>